So, daily miracles lessons. So we started this new year with the daily lessons, which is really great. So like, if you never have done it, do it at least once completely, and and you you train your mind in a way that you could not imagine that you ever have done. That's why I I present this. That's why I offer this. And for me, it is an uh, incredible thing to do this after 22 years, it apparently seems to be. Uh, I start overdoing this every day, too, and, and being intensely, um, say, connected to the lessons, reading them, um, sharing them, uh, posting them, you name it. And why do I do this? I have no idea. I just feel like doing it. It's For me, it's a real... Um, say pleasure to read them again now in the word text and um, they're not that different than from the blue book but um, I still really love it but when I read them now it is it is like oh my god look at that it's even written it's written on, in black and white I've been sharing these ideas and I've been living them but now I see them again like printed on a paper that's amazing and that book is just available for everyone who wants to see it and read it and it is like it is an incredible um, a way to train your mind it's very systematic and systematic training uh, that, that sounds like maybe you yeah at least I got a bit um, say allergic to the word of um, systematic but in this case it really is beautiful so when I started using this for myself for the first time say 22 years ago um, I uh, discovered within a couple of days that I had moments of uh, peace of mind well, that was a miracle to me because in that time I was so in so much uh, confusion that I really didn't know which thought to pick anymore. So it worked for me and that's why I think it will work for you too. If you never have used it, please do so because, because it is like amazing. And in fact, there's no spiritual training without it, without training your mind. And not training your mind to become a better mind, no. Basically, training your mind to let it, to let the ideas that are coming be for what they are. And not fighting them, not doing anything with them. You can also say, like, you train your mind to, to just back off, in fact. And be no longer a disturbance in the pure communication that's already in you. So that's another way of saying that. And um, so today I want to do it all a bit different. So I presented, as you could see on the website, I presented the, the first seven lessons, like the rationale for the preceding lessons of lesson seven. And because that makes it uh, clear how this is set up. So one lesson can be completely out of arts. It seems that way for a moment until you see how perfectly well this is set up. So when I see the past, it is because my thoughts do not mean anything and the things that I see are already over and you name it. It becomes reasonable to even uh, accept that idea. Not that that is necessary. You know that from the introduction. Like accepting is not necessary. Understanding is not necessary. Um, like you hardly have, have to do anything except doing the lesson. Simply doing it. Applying it. Doing it. A couple of times a day. That's all that's being asked. Well, that's really easy. In fact, but here, for an untrained mind, it is really difficult. Because the one thing that the mind doesn't want this to be trained because it, it loves to carry away and it loves to do all kinds of things. But now you decide, yes, I'm, <coughs> I can do this. I can be in charge of my mind. I decide when I want to listen to it or not. And I can also take another look at what it actually represents and what it seems to be. Like in the last couple of lessons we discovered... Uh, even today, you know, it's like when the mind thinks, it actually is not thinking at all. It's completely blank. 
So here you go with your great ideas and with your great opinions and with your great vision about who knows what. It's like, no, your mind is actually blank. It, it doesn't even know what thinking is. And you see and you say you entertain yourself with it quite a, yeah, quite a part of your day. You inter entertain yourself with ideas. You wander around in them, you get distracted by them, you see them and you know all this stuff. You know really well how that is. So actually your mind is blank then. And, and a blank mind is not doing anything. It's like it's not experiencing anything. It is not, um, it is not creating while well, that is the normal way for you to be. So, in other words, where we're going to, what we are going to discover in training our mind is, in fact, when the <coughs> when the thought fountain, as I could call them, like the fount, the thought fountain, goes a bit more to the background. Suddenly, you see that there is a communication that it was always already in you, starting to speak to you and also you feel the energy of the thoughts that are coming then like the thoughts with a capital T and it's more like energy it's more like light that comes to you and connectivity and connectedness and and all that love um, release of fear um, all this is is happening when you when you are actually um, leaving your fountain of ideas, fountain of thoughts for what it is and not engaging in that. So this is, this is really quite something. So that's why it's useful to train your mind. Like there's no other way to come into peace of mind, into a communication with your creator you will have to have some form of training in that sense. Your mind needs to be a, say at least a little trained in order for you to have a moment in which it is not occupied with something, but completely free and, and open. Just because you, you will be able to, to experience um, a, a fulfillment, completedness, wholeness, oneness, you know, in fact, all the things that you're looking for in your or searching for in your spiritual journey. See, in all paths, this is coming back to you, whether it's training to look at a stone, like in Zen, Zen Buddhism, you look at a stone and <coughs> you dissolve into it or um, this is a very short description of Zen Buddhism but it is like you occupy your mind with something like here's something you give the mind something to do it uh, for instance in the mind training it is, it is like um, say come up with situations that happened a moment ago and use those to apply to the lesson so literally the mind needs to do something, otherwise it keeps wandering away. So that's the same with, with Buddhism, with focusing on, uh, for instance, on breath. When you meditate, focus on breath. Why is that so good? Because the, uh, the breath needs that? No. You give your mind something to do, because otherwise it would walk away. It would just be distracted. Now it has a focus and it really thinks it's very important to, to keep a focus on the breath. And it works perfectly because at least it's not thinking about anything else then at that point, it, it does something. So, and that gives your mind in its totality the opportunity to be open and receive light and love. So you say after that, it's like, wow, I feel really good. Well, that really works. If I concentrate on my breath, then I get beautiful experiences. So this is a bit like, background information about the mind training. The mind training is there to keep your mind busy, give it something to do, an exercise. In the meantime, your mind opens up for more and more light. It's wonderful. So it's a win-win situation. Like I said, I want to start a bit different today. Um, and in fact, 
start the end of the book with the epilogue. So I call it then a prologue. The epilogue is a, is a description in, in about five paragraphs of what this course entails, but also it is placed in a reference uh, that's really great to, to hear, to see like, oh, that's, that's how I can look at this. Oh, that makes total sense. At least that is what, when I read it and I hope to convey that to you. Like the, the epilogue uh, can be found in the back of the blue book, for instance, but also um, in the word text, it is going to be on page 452. So it's in volume four, the use of terms, and that's the last part. So basically that is always the in the, um, the blue book, the FIP, like Foundation of Inner Peace edition. It is in the back of the book. And it's great. It should actually be printed in front. Like some books, some Course in Miracles will have it in the front because of, of the, yeah, it's, it's also a prologue. See, the interesting thing is that you also come in touch with the idea of timelessness. And when that becomes apparent, then it is, it really doesn't matter if you put this in the front or in the back. So here we are in our first Course in Miracles daily lesson uh, class. We actually start with the end of the book. Okay, so I, I, I go through this, um, say, paragraph by paragraph. And it's it's not very long, it's just beautiful. So see it as here Jesus is speaking to you. Forget not, once this journey is begun, the end is certain. Doubt along the way will come and go and go to come again, yet is the ending sure. No one can fail to do what God appointed him to do. When you forget, remember that you walk with him and with his word upon your heart. Who could despair when hope like this is his? Illusions of despair may seem to come, but learn how not to be deceived by them. Behind each one there is reality and there is God. Why would you wait for this and trade it for illusions when his love is but an instant further on the road where all illusions end? The end is sure and guaranteed by God who stands before a lifeless image when a step away the holies of the holiest opens up an ancient door that leads beyond the world Okay, I'll repeat that once more. Who stands before a lifeless image when a step away the holy of the holiest opens up an ancient door that leads beyond the world? And that's lovely. You are a stranger here, but you belong to him who loves you as he loves himself. Ask but my help to, un to roll the stone away, and it is done according to his will. We have begun the journey. Long ago the end was written in the stars and set into the heavens with a shining ray that held it safe within eternity and through all time as well, and holds it still unchanged, unchanging and unchangeable. Be not afraid. We only start again an ancient journey long ago begun that but seems new. We have begun again upon the road we traveled on before and lost our way a little while and now we try again. Our new beginning has the certainty the journey lacked till now. Look up and see his word among the stars, where he has set your name along with his. Look up and find your certain destiny. The world would hide, but God would have you see. 
Let us wait here in silence and kneel down an instant in gratitude to him who called us and helped us hear his call. And then let us arise and go in faith along the way to him. Now we are sure we do not walk alone, for God is here and with him all our brothers. Now we know that we will never lose the way again. The song begins again, which has been stopped only an instant, though it seems to be unsung forever. What is here begun will grow in life and strength and hope until the world is still an instant and forgets all the dream of sin all that the dream of sin had made of it. Let us go out and meet the newborn world, knowing that Christ has been reborn in it, and that the holiness of this rebirth will last forever. We had lost our way, but he has found it for us. Let us come and bid him welcome, who returns to us to celebrate salvation, and the end of all we thought we made. The morning star of this new day looks on a different world where God is welcomed and his Son with him. We who complete him offer thanks to him as he gives thanks to us. The Son is still and in the peace that God has given him enters his home and is at peace at last. The sun is still and in the peace that God has given him enters his home and is at peace at last. So this is what I wanted to, to start off with just because it is like um, almost like the fulfillment of it like it's it gives you the the hope that it started that there's a new beginning that that you're part of it as soon as you started this journey the end was certain so and that is and doubt along the way may come and may come to go again and come again and go again so this is this is also say part of the journey for most of us it's like pretty amazing how this is but you know still that you, his word is written upon your heart so and that is with this training you see that these words you will never lose they will always be with you they will come to you in moments that you actually are say desperate or whatever but they also can be completely with you in the moments that you're so happy so it's like that is a given and the word is also the life of God in you, the light that is in you, available to you whenever you allow that to come into your awareness. So training our mind, mind training is then really training yourself, so to speak, so training yourself to open for this communication more and more and more. And and deeper and deeper, you know, it's like absolute incredible opportunity to to have that realized in you, to have that in your awareness, to take that with you and remember it and rejoice in that remembrance. It's like I get so happy when I think about remembering when I forgot for a moment and suddenly it's like, oh, yeah, wait a minute, I can I can literally take a moment to come into this remembrance by becoming quiet letting my ideas go even though it doesn't seem to be useful in the moment say before that maybe even like you look at it as like oh, yeah that's one of the things i can do but no when you start doing this when you start to take time to sit with yourself and allow a change to occur the minute that you chose to sit still becomes two minutes or 10 minutes or maybe even half an hour and suddenly you start to enjoy your stillness so this is 
yeah, I thought it was a lovely start of this uh, because it's like everything is in here and and it's put in perspective. That's what I love too. It's like it's an incredible gift for you. And you take it with you because you started this journey. The end is certain. Okay, so key lesson seven was one of the attractions of today, so to speak. I put it in the uh, in the uh, index, in the overview of the the classes. See and. Lesson seven, we can go to it. Um, so in the urtext, it is on page, yeah, almost there, on page 295. And in the blue book, I don't know where it is, um, but you will find it. So the lessons of A Course in Miracles. So in fact, it says like in the, um lesson 365 in the introduction to the to the end of the lessons it in fact says that this is a training program of one year 365 days every day a lesson and then in fact it is like this is not the end of it it is just when when you want to proceed like when you want to take the next step for yourself you will be led along the way so it is not that you have to uh, repeat these lessons over and over and over and over and over unless that's being shared with you, unless that is given you as the thing to do. So in my case it was, like I, I did this for uh, probably 15 years, it's pretty amazing. And <coughs> it came to back to me all the time, you know, so it's like, oh yeah, th this was for me how this worked. Yes, I did other things too. I read other books too. And I, I got myself into the infinite way too. Absolutely. So that doesn't exclude this at all. Because it's literally on the last page that it says, and you can read that. It's like, when you need a word, it will be given to you. When you need stillness, it will be given to you. When you need, it's like, it's more like, focused on your relationship with your inner voice with your with your holy spirit like he will guide you on a daily basis what am i supposed to do so in the first year it's being said like okay just do these lessons go through them and train yourself by applying these lessons when you can according to the instructions that are given and you know it's like it's a beautiful thing because you, you actually start to recognize too that uh, sometimes you will be able to do it, sometimes not. You feel a lot of resistance or you have no idea what this is about. You cannot even imagine. And some lessons, they seem to stick on your mind uh, amazingly. But even then, you leave them for what they are and step forward to the next. Because there's a real succession in them. It's like a perfectly planned um, systematic way of t uh, training your mind so you can really take one at a time one per day so now lesson seven was on the seventh day today is day 10 so i'm using um, lesson seven because it's such a fundamental lesson so i do a quick review of that and then we go to lesson 10 for today So, going through them, I just read the, say, the rationale for the preceding lessons, for lesson one, two, three, four, five, and six. And to freshen them up, I will be reading the, the review first. So, I do the review of the first six lessons, then I go to lesson seven to read the rationale for these lessons I do not understand anything I see how could I understand what I see when I have judged it amiss what I see is the projection of my own errors of thought I do not understand what I see because it is not understandable 
there's no sense in trying to understand it. But there's every reason to let it go, and make room for what can be seen and understood and loved. I can exchange what I see now for this merely by being willing to do so. Is not this a better choice than the one I made before? So, and if you're wondering where I get this from, this is from the review lesson 51. These thoughts do not mean anything. The thoughts of which I am aware do not mean anything because I am trying to think without God. What I call my thoughts are not my real thoughts. My real thoughts are the thoughts I think with God. I am not aware of them. I am not aware of them because I have made my thoughts to take their place. I am willing to recognize that my thoughts do not mean anything. and to let them go. I choose to have them be replaced by what they were intended to replace. My thoughts are meaningless, but all creation lies in the thoughts I think with God. I am never upset for the reason I think. I am never upset for the reason I think, because I am constantly trying to justify my thoughts. I am constantly trying to make them true. I make all things my enemies, so that my anger is justified and my attacks are warranted. I have not realized how much I have misused everything I see by assigning this role to it. I have done this to defend a thought system that has hurt me and that I no longer want, and I am willing to let it go. I am upset because I see what is not there. Reality is never frightening. It is impossible that it could upset me. Reality brings only perfect peace. When I am upset it is always because I have replaced reality with illusions I made up. The illusions are upsetting because I have given them reality and thus regard reality as an illusion. Nothing in God's creation is affected in any way by this confusion of mine. I am always upset by nothing. So yes, I do realize that I missed the first two lessons. So I leave them now for what they are and, and move on to lesson seven. Because they will return anyway. And I will at least mention the titles. Nothing I see means anything. And I've given what I see all the meaning it has for me. So I see only the past. Lesson 7. The rationale for all preceding ones, the ones I just read some of it from, is this. I see only the past and it's the reason why nothing that you see means anything. Because basically you're not seeing anything. We'll see that in the later lesson. The reason why nothing that you see means anything is that you actually miss it all the time, what is available to you, because you're actually looking through the glasses of the past, your past associations and all that. It is the reason why you have given everything you see all the meaning it has for you. It is the reason why you have given everything you see all the meaning it has for you. Well, see. You had to give it meaning because it didn't have any. If it would have meaning, you wouldn't have, you don't have to give anything meaning. So that's, you set up your whole world by giving meaning to things. You value it. If you didn't value it, you would not see it that way. You would see it differently. So this is, this is what we do with, I see only in the past. You actually miss it. You validate things, you value things, but it's not asked of you. It's not necessary. Like the things, so to speak, the things of value have value. They come to you because they have value. But now you say clutter your mind with all these values that you have given them. Objects, persons things, events, circumstances, you name it, world politics, justice system, race, 
religion. You know, all this is made up by giving it value, by letting it be there, be there because it's, you have to validate it in order for it to be there. This is how you created your world. It's like, wow, unbelievable. But also now you see what you were you are doing by doing so. It is also the reason why you do not understand anything you see. Because you don't understand what you see when you just give your own value system validation. You don't know what you see. You un don't understand anything you see. See, if you don't validate it and allow what is to come to you, what is is full of knowing. It doesn't need understanding. No, it is, it is knowing. You know what it is. It tells you what it is. You are what it is. That takes care of separation too. So I don't want to go too fast. But this is really all in there. So it's like you have no idea when you read these lessons what is in there. It's unbelievable. That's why it's for me it's like such a joy to read them again and see like, oh my God, look at that. It's unbelievable what's been given. In fact, every lesson can just completely take you home. Like if you see what you've been doing and letting that go and seeing that you don't have to do that and that you're actually home in heaven, well, that is basically what's being presented in every lesson. So it's not even just training your mind, like I said in the beginning. No, it gives your mind something to do, so there's more space in your awareness for something else. It is the reason why your thoughts do not mean anything and why they are not like the things you see. It is the reason why you are never upset for the reason you think. So you can also say then, it is the reason why you are never upset for the reason you think, is then looking at the idea of validation system, like giving it value. If you don't do that, if you let go of that, if you open up for communication, there's no such thing as upset in that, because it only is fulfillment, completedness and connectedness. So you can never be upset about that. So that's why being upset has never to do with what you think it is. And we'll, we'll see that later on in the lessons too. So, but for now it's enough to say like, I'm never upset for the reason I think. That's already like a great admission. It's like, oh my God, look at that. That's, that's a real realization. I really thought I was upset about this. And it, apparently it is not for the reason that I think. The fact that there's another option available for you, that there's an, a possibility that it isn't the way that you have been seeing it or have been thinking about it, that, that there's a way for you to, to experience this in a whole different way, is an incredible aha moment, in fact. You know, it's like, oh my God, is it? This is Eureka. There's another possibility. I'm not stuck in my contracted human uh, frame of reference. No, I'm not stuck in my emotional, say, darkness. No, it is, I'm not upset for the reason that I think. There's another opportunity available. It is not this. It must be something else. It is not this. So, and then the last one is, it is the reason why I see only the past is the reason why you are upset because you see something that is not there. So, and then it immediately starts about old ideas about time. So, let me cut this short. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a hurry. I don't know why. That's not necessary at all. So, all ideas are rooted in time, it says in a moment. So this must be one of them. Like, I feel rushed. Oh, okay, so 
I'm not upset for the reason I think. It is not why I think I'm upset. So to bring it back to lesson seven, I see only the past. So I see something that's already over. See, more and more, even in science, it becomes obvious that that is real, really true. Like scientists discover the moment that you see an object, there's a distance between the object and you. So it takes time for it to come into your, say, on your retina. It, it takes a moment for it to get there. So what you see is, is not there at all. You just receive the impulses, the photons that are, say, igniting some, some nerve, um, say, electricity that's being translated in your mind and interpreted in your mind as something. But see, this is it's like, yeah, there's, there's a time between. So you're actually never seeing it, even scientifically. You don't even see the thing that you think that you see. No, you interpret it. And this goes a little bit further. Um, if you see quantum science, it goes a bit further even. It's like the object that you see is only there because you look at it. So that goes even further. It's like it is projected outward. It is given all the characteristics that you give it. See, that becomes pretty obvious now too. It's like I see only the past. So what I see, this cup, or you know, the example of a cup, is just a cup because I have past associations connected to the idea of a cup. I see the idea of a cup, but I don't see the cup. Like the cup would tell me much more about the universe than you could possibly imagine. But I miss that information because I defined it, I put it in form and know all the characteristics about it. So I know that if I drop it, that it will fall apart and all that. So in science, it becomes more and more obvious, especially in the quantum science, it becomes obvious that you are making this cup solid and giving all the characteristics. If you would not do that, it would not have these characteristics. It would not even be there. And that's pretty, maybe it becomes uh, more obvious if you look at it in terms of the virtual games that we're playing, like the virtual reality games, you put your VR box on your head and suddenly you, you're in a world and see the same objects where you can play with, like virtual play with, and it responds to it as the way that you're used to in your physical world. So actually we are creating another uh, metaverse world that is totally the same as what we have been doing but maybe now it becomes more obvious while we're actually repeating the story and see what we're doing because when I take off my mask it is almost like an awakening you know I take my VR mask off and suddenly I'm in in a different world that have totally different characteristics even though there's similarities so it, that is almost like an awakening if you if you could take off your say HR like a human <laughs> your human reality mask, then you would wake up. You would see that there is no such thing as this. Like oh my god, it was all a game. How now I can laugh about it? There's no reality to it. I see only the past. Okay, so I uh, elaborated on this. Um, so now bring it back to lesson 10. Uh, we have some time still, that's wonderful. Lesson 10. So the idea of time that's being mentioned in uh, lesson 7, I will come back to that on some other, in another class, because that is, that comes back to us anyway all the time. Um, because um, the training is also to undo your belief in time and have received different ideas of time. So we, we will work with that in, in these lessons too. So today's lesson 
on page 296 of the Urtex book. My thoughts do not mean anything. So this is pretty great. So the ideas apply to all the thoughts of which you are aware or become aware in the practice periods. The reason the ideas applicable to all of them is that they are not your real thoughts. We have made this distinction before and will again. You have no basis for comparison as yet. When you do, you will have no doubt that what you once believed were your thoughts did not mean anything. Well, this is a bit what I illustrated a moment ago. It's like you will see that they don't have any meaning. And it doesn't mean that you cannot, you can still value some things if you want to, but you know that they don't really have any meaning. So this is the second time we have used this kind of idea. The form is only slightly different. This time the ideas introduced with my thoughts instead of these thoughts. And no link is made overtly with the things around you. The emph emphasis is now on the lack of reality of what you think you think. So I'm going to come to the place where it actually says blank, blank mind. Or maybe that was yesterday, I don't know. This aspect of the correction process began with the idea that the thoughts of which you are aware are meaningless outside rather than within and then stress their past rather than their present status. Now we are emphasizing that the presence of these thoughts mean you are not thinking. This is merely another way of repeating our earlier statement that your mind is really a blank. To recognize this is to recognize nothingness when you think you see it. As such, it is the prerequisite for vision. So this idea will help me to release me from all that I now believe. My thoughts do not mean anything. Well, there's no exception to it. Everything you can come up with does not exist. It does not mean anything. Amazing, huh? So, so the quality of thinking then is different. So when your mind is a blank, basically you're not thinking at all. And that can be a bit of a scary idea first. Like, yeah, but what have I been thinking about? And what is all this? What is... See, and this is really what this is about, to, to shake the foundations of your belief. And that is intense. That is, um, yeah, it takes a moment to get used to that, so to speak. But if you allow a different experience to come to you, it will help you to, to trust the process, to trust what is going on. But to be confused after the first 10 days, to be a bit confused about your reality, is a very normal th appearance, like a very normal thing for you to happen. It's actually really good, because you're not, if you can, if you can deal with it, it, it is great. Because it is like, yeah, you have to give up your belief in your belief system. And that's like the foundation of many years of uh, believing that. So to let go of that, brings in a certain uncertainty and that is and that's great very helpful so really really lovely and it will change it will shift really quickly because it's like in the first 20 lessons suddenly there's a shift and you will feel that too it's like some of these lessons will be so comforting because you actually start to hear something else about what is going on here and why you should do this. You know, that's that's why you just do the lesson. You don't need to uh, accept them. You may actively resist them. It really doesn't matter as long as you do them. <laughs> they work anyway. And they work you, in fact. So they work you, they help you to come to the realization of your reality. So it's worth doing it. All right, so this is a bit what I 
would love to share with you today in this in this class this way and um, so in this online class we continue with sharing our own experiences or how is it going with doing these lessons or what is a great discovery that you just had and if you feel like you can also put that in the comments if I put this on YouTube so you're welcome to do so thank you so much